It was described as football from another planet. Total football was the Dutch vision of how the game should be played. And its poster boy was Johan Cruyff, the total footballer. In 1999, Johan Cruyff was voted the European Player of the Century. He finished second behind Pele in the World Player of the Century poll. Three times he was awarded the Ballon d'Or as Europe's best. And in 1974, the Dutch number 14 led his country to the World Cup final. Cruyff was born in Amsterdam, five minutes away from the home of Ajax, the club he would lead to three straight European Cup wins before moving to Barcelona for a world record transfer fee. Over an extraordinary 19-year career, he scored 425 goals, but his mark on the game was never based on statistics. His legacy was in what he created, a pathway for the game of football to move into the future. He was one of the first players I saw who did amazing things with a football. Players like that were always an inspiration. We tried to copy what they did. We're talking about one of the real greats of the game. The word great, the word legend, sometimes is used a little bit loosely and uh, uh, some, sometimes even flippantly these days. You know, you become great when you score a goal in a game, but there, there are one or two greats, there are one or two legends, and, and Johan Cruyff was one of those. Dutch manager Renus Michaels was the brains behind the total football movement whereby players constantly interchanged roles. And it was Cruyff who possessed the magic to turn Michael's vision into a beautiful reality. It was a new kind of football which captured the attention of the world and turned Ajax from a club barely known outside the Netherlands into one of the world's best teams. Players swapped positions at great speed, creating an unprecedented fluidity of play with Cruyff the on-field maestro, who could be seen sending instructions to teammates as he dribbled past confused opponents. In my opinion, he was the best of the world. As a football player, you can consider Pele or Maradona as the best player of the world. But he had something extra. He played fantastic himself but he always looked at the rest of the team as well. He made sure everyone played better. These two things together made him an absolute great player. In 1973, Croy followed Michaels to Barcelona for a record-breaking 3.1 million euro fee. Their reuniting had instant results, with a La Liga title coming to Camp Nou in Cruyff's first season, as he was named European Footballer of the Year. But that was just the entree, with the pair combining to lead the Netherlands on a fairy tale run at the 1974 World Cup. And it was on the biggest stage in world sport, where the growing legend of Cruyff soared to even greater heights. It became known as the Cruyff Turn. One single act in a group match at the 1974 World Cup changed the way a generation looked at football. At the 23rd minute of the game, Cruyff was being tracked tightly by Swedish defender Jan Olsen. And facing his own goal, the Dutch star suddenly executed an unexpected 180 degree turn and left his marker standing. It became his signature maneuver, and one which every great player from that moment on tried to copy. You play football with your head, and your legs are there to help you. Cruyff left many defenders bewildered during the World Cup as he led his team into the final against host nation West Germany. The Dutch hadn't qualified for the tournament since 1938, but they were the new glamour team of world football 
thanks mainly to the exploits of one man. Cruyff scored three goals en route to Golden Ball honors for the best player of the World Cup. And in keeping with the script, he went on a dazzling solo run in the opening minute of the final, before being brought down by a German defender, earning a penalty. The hosts had yet to touch the ball and were already a goal down after the penalty conversion by Johan Nieskens. But unfortunately, there wasn't to be a fairy tale ending for Cruyff, with West Germany scoring from the penalty spot at the 25th minute, before the great Gerd Müller scored the winning goal on the stroke of half time. For the Dutch, the defeat was catastrophic. Cruyff, then only 27, announced he would not compete in the next World Cup, unprepared to leave his wife and family again for such a long period. He was a man of his word, despite intense pressure to change his mind, and he retired from international football in 1977 after just 48 caps and 33 goals. His five-year stint at Barcelona ended the following year and he then spent time playing in America and Spain again before returning to Ajax in 1981. After a contract dispute with his beloved club in 1983, Cruyff did the unthinkable and moved to arch-rival Feyenoord, leading them to the national title. One season saw him out, and 12 months later he was again back at Ajax, this time as manager. As was his way on the pitch, Cruyff's coaching style was all about creative, risk-taking, beautiful football. I much prefer to win 5-4 than 1-0. History repeated itself, and Cruyff left Ajax for Barcelona in 1988, walking into a club in turmoil. Barca had won just one league title in 14 years. Cruyff had saved the club on the pitch in the late 1970s, a decade later, he did it again from the dugout. The Dutchman put together a star-studded lineup who thrived under his revolutionary tactics. And in his eight-year reign, Barcelona won 11 trophies. Johan Cruyff painted the chapel, and Barcelona coaches since merely restore or improve it. After departing Camp Nou in 1996, Cruyff declared he wouldn't coach again, but returned to manage the Catalonia national team in 2009. His influence on the world game continued to live through the players and managers he'd touched, all of whom were in awe of the man who changed football forever. Cruyff's wisdom was much sought after, and he was one of the few qualified to judge football's two modern-day greats, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. I like always small technical players because I've been like that. Yes. But basically, when you see uh, Ronaldo, is a great player, but he's a goal scorer. He will never be the one who creates the team or he is uh, taking care of that the team is playing well. He does the finishing, he does the action, I mean, he's great in that. Messi is more getting all the time more a team player, so he makes an action, he gives the passes, and because the exists of, uh, of Messi are, are huge, are very much. So for me as a player, not a goal scorer. There have been a lot of goal scorers. He is a great goal scorer, but he's not the best player. For me, it's a big difference between a player and a goal scorer. Cruyff had been a chain smoker until he had heart surgery in 1991, and in 2015 announced he'd been diagnosed with lung cancer. Tengo cancer. I have cancer. That is fact. The treatment is already over. In that sense, there are things that have surprised me a lot. I used to use a lot, saying that positive thoughts and words were a good thing. But now I can really tell that so many people from all over the world wishing me well, I can now tell I have a body twice as strong as before. However, just over four months later, football lost one of its immortals at the age of 68. 
it's a legacy. You know, in football you have the, the, the mortals, which is 99.9%, which I'm part of it. And you have the immortals, which is a small percentage that will always be remembered for the Cruyff turn or for, you know, the total football, the way he liked to play football. And, uh, you know, he's a legend. And I can only be proud of him. Thanks for watching. For more great content on all things football, make sure you hit the subscribe button.